Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm David Kerr from Lansing in Michigan, and these are your latest news headlines from around the world. On the first day of his four-day apostolic visit to Bahrain, Pope Francis has been given an official welcome by the country's head of state, King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Pope is visiting the Kingdom of Bahrain from Thursday the 3rd to Sunday the 6th of November in a subsequent address to members of civil society, the diplomatic corps and civil authorities. Pope Francis described the tiny Gulf state as a place of encounter between different peoples. The Roman pontiff said Bahrain is a land where the ancient and the modern converge. In his discourse, the Pope referred to Bahrain's iconic Tree of Life, which is over 400 years old and lives in the Arabian desert. The Pope said that the tree is an emblem of vitality, adding that everyone is invited to bring waters of fraternity to the parched deserts of human existence. Pope Francis also spoke out against capital punishment, which is presently legal in Bahrain. Meanwhile, Friday has seen Pope Francis give an address to the closing session of the Bahrain Forum for Dialogue in the capital city of Manama. Adasatil Baba Francis, Baba al Vatican. His Holiness, Pope Francis of the Vatican. He exhorted everyone who believes in God to reject isolated thinking in the historic wake of two world wars and the Cold War. He also condemned inequality, hunger and climate change. The Pope then exhorted all religious leaders to commit themselves to set a good example. It is our duty to encourage and assist our human family, said the Holy Father. Pope Francis said that whenever hatred, violence and discord are preached, the name of God is desecrated. On the same day, Pope Francis also addressed an ecumenical Christian gathering in Our Lady of Arabia Cathedral in Awali. Saturday, we'll see Pope Francis celebrate Holy Mass in Bahrain's National Stadium. It's estimated that more than 25,000 people will attend. After Mass, the Pope will meet with many young people from a nearby Catholic school. Finally, on Sunday, the Holy Father will conclude his four-day visit with a meeting with local bishops, priests, consecrated persons, seminarians and pastoral workers at the Sacred Heart Church in Manama. Meanwhile, in an exclusive interview with Shalom Wuddle, the chaplain of the Arabic community of Sacred Heart Church in Manama, said that the papal visit to the Persian Gulf state is a sign of peace that paves the way for dialogue in the country. Father Charbel Fayad expressed hope that Pope Francis's visit to Bahrain will bridge the relationships between Christians and Muslims. You know that Pope Francis is coming with a theme to build bridge between Muslim and Catholic Christian. Uh, and the peace on earth, this is what Pope Francis wants to build. Peace on earth. Peace on earth to people of goodwill. And let us try to build peace, to work for peace, and to be an instrument of peace, like also St. Francis told us to do, to be. And for this reason, Pope Francis is coming. For these reasons, we must continue this mission here in Bahrain and in everywhere. Expressing gratitude to the Holy Father for being with the Bahraini faithful, Father Fayyad said that the papal visit, which has the theme of peace on earth to people of goodwill, is a step forward in fostering inter-religious relations. The Capuchin Friar said that the Pope will help the Arabic community of the Sacred Heart Church to face the challenges of being faithful to their faith in Bahrain, as they are both Arabic and Catholic. In other news, Benjamin Netanyahu has been named as the new Prime Minister of Israel. This will be the Likud party leader's third stint as Prime Minister, having served in the post from 1996 to 1999, and then again from 2009 to 2021. 73-year-old Mr Netanyahu's appointment comes after the previous incumbent, Yair Lapid, of the centrist Yesh Atid party conceded defeat following this week's Israeli elections. Mr Lapid had been an interim Prime Minister since July. The Likud party gained enough seats in the Israeli legislature, the Knesset, after forming a political alliance with two other political parties, Jewish power and religious Zionism. Gunmen have kidnapped at least 22 children from a farm in northern Nigeria and are currently demanding a ransom in exchange for their release. The abduction took place in the northern state of Katsina on Thursday. A local chief from the area claims that the assailants are demanding a ransom, the equivalent of 68,000 US dollars. It's thought that the vast majority of children are girls. Katsina is one of several northwestern and north central Nigerian states where, in recent times, 
Violent gangs of motorcycles have killed and abducted individuals from villages and highways in exchange for ransom. The possible ban on nativity scenes on public property in Mexico would be an attack upon religious freedom. That's the warning from the campaign group, the National Front for the Family. Next week, the country's Supreme Court will begin studying a lawsuit that opposes the placement of, quote, decorative objects, alluding to the birth of Jesus Christ, in the months of December and January on public property. A legal challenge has been filed against the Chuchola City Council in the Mexican state of Yucatan. However, if the suit is upheld by the Supreme Court, it's feared that it will pave the way for a similar ban to be imposed across the country. One of the United States' leading pro-life activists has criticised Hollywood actress Anne Hathaway for saying that, quote, abortion can be another word for mercy. Lila Rose of Live Action called Miss Hathaway's statement sickening and delusional. The actress made her controversial comment while appearing as a guest on ABC's chat show The View. Archaeologists have discovered an ancient Christian monastery thought to be 1,400 years old on an island off the coast of the United Arab Emirates. The site on Sinaya Island sheds new light on the history of early Christianity along the shores of the Persian Gulf. It's thought that the site may date back as far as the years before Islam spread across the Arabian Peninsula in the 7th century. Christians in the Pakistani capital of Islamabad are calling for the forthcoming local elections on December the 24th to be rescheduled to avoid a clash with Christmas celebrations. It's estimated that over 50,000 Christians will be among the approximately 1 million voters eligible to vote in the poll, which includes elections to council seats specifically set aside for minorities. Hence, in a letter signed on November the 1st, Manzur Massey, a member of the National Commission for Human Rights, urged the Chief Election Commissioner to reschedule the elections. The city of Islamabad is currently on lockdown following the failed assassination attempt on former Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan in the city of Gunjawala on Thursday. A senior Iraqi Archbishop has made a personal plea for forgiveness and a renunciation of violence at the R20 Religious Forum, currently being held at Bali in Indonesia. Archbishop Basha Warder of the Chaldean Catholic Arch Eparchy of Erbil said his own experience and the history of his homeland reveals the empty diplomacy, deception, doublespeak, hidden goals and politeness that obscures reality are no longer useful. Instead, he said, the blatant and unmistakable truth must be spoken by those who are ferocious adversaries. The R20 Religion Forum is organised by the Nan Lutal Aluma, the Indonesian Islamic movement, that claims to be the largest Muslim organisation in the world. Finally, a quick reminder, there will be a special news bulletin on Shalom World News on Saturday, November the 5th and Sunday, November the 6th, which will include all the news from the people visit to Bari. You can also join us at swnews.org for news updates. Shalom.